Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have another AC diagnosis video for you on this 2001 Ford Escape. Now the concern is there's absolutely no AC cooling at all. I turn it on and just nothing happens inside the cabin. So first things first, you go over here, you check while the engine's running, the AC is supposedly on, and check that AC compressor to make sure the clutch on there actually engages and it starts spinning. Now this one is not spinning at all because there's no pressure in the system so the safety switches are not allowing it to run because there's no refrigerant, there's no oil being carried throughout the system and it can potentially lock up. So it's a little safety device on there. Sure enough, put the manifold gauge set on there. Let's see what we got. We got zero PSI atmospheric pressure. So all the refrigerant is gone. At this point, what we need to do is inject it with dye. That's the most accurate way to find a leak on these systems. Sniffers, they can be good for evap leaks where it's coming out over there eventually from the evap drain, but otherwise you want to use UV dye, okay? And you wanna use a good quality dye. This is a dye that I use from Tracer Line. Really good stuff, ultra bright, and if it seeps out just a little bit, you're gonna find it. So the first thing we need to do is pull the system into a vacuum with the recovery machine here or a vacuum pump if you have one. And then we're going to inject the dye through the low side port right here. And then we're going to charge the system with refrigerant through the low side port also. And that'll push the dye throughout the system. At that point, the system will be fully operational. AC compressor will be allowed to come on and we can pressurize the system, have our highs and our lows, maybe go for a test drive, shake the system a little bit, get it to leak, and then we can come back with our UV light and find it. All right, so let's go ahead and pull it into a vacuum. You know, 10, 15 minutes is all you need just to pull it into vacuum, get all the air out of there, and we can uh, charge it after that. All right, now after the vacuum has completed, we checked it to make sure it wasn't just gonna bleed right up because then it'd be an obvious leak. So right now you can see it's sitting right there at negative 30 or so. It's holding, so it's a small leak. So we can go ahead and inject the die. So we'll inject one car's length on here into the low side port. And it should take it right into there. because the system's in a vacuum, right about there. And we can go ahead and take this off, and you can start charging it. Look at that, it's ultra bright stuff. You'll see it with the uh, UV light. All right, so let's go ahead and charge it through the low side port on here. And like I said, it'll push it throughout the system this way. Let's see, this one takes around 0.97 kilograms. High side is closed. So we can go ahead and hit start and let it charge. Now we're gonna do a full charge on here, what the vehicle calls for, because while this is all circulating through the system on here, okay, we're gonna make sure the AC system is functional. Compressor comes on, pressures look right, the discharge temp is okay, um, check for any freezing of the lines. You can do a lot while that dye is going through the system and finding the leak. It's gonna seep out the leak point there. So we can do a, make sure everything else is okay. And we know the only problem with the AC system at that point is the leaky refrigerant line or hose, okay? So we'll do that once it gets done charging here. We'll run it for a bit and make sure everything's okay and let it work its way out of the system. All right, now with the system charged, we're going to let the system run, like I said, but I'm also going to monitor the dynamic pressures while it's running, and why not, just so we know the exact temperature. Uh, coming out of the vents, we're going to monitor the vents with a dial thermometer. So let's go ahead and start it and see what we get. Make sure you turn it on. Two or three in the vents there. Now once you start the vehicle after charging it, come down here and make sure that AC clutch is engaged and our compressor is on. It is. It's spinning for a good amount of time. It's good cycle time. 
We come over here next and check our pressures. They look good. Right here, around 25 to 35 is good. You can see we're holding there. 150, absolutely perfect. And we're holding, it's pumping this whole time. Get that good flow through the system and we have long enough cycle times. So right there just went off. You'll see it come back on. That's a good cycle time for a vehicle like this. So we're good to go there. Now, let's go look at our interior vent temp. Let's see what we got there. Right at 40. So right there, we're good to go. The system is operational. Cycle times are good. Our pressures are good. Now we just need to let the system run. That cycle throughout the system. Now you go for a drive, shake it up a little bit, and we can see where it leaks out. All right, well, that didn't take too long. I was down here doing an oil change, and look what I found. Now, this there's no UV light at all going right now, and you can see how bright this stuff is with the regular flashlight. And this one appears to be a case seal See the half right here, half of the compressor and the other half? Uh, that's leaking on here. The lines aren't leaking and nothing up top, but man, that's one heck of a leak down here. Look at that, all that dye. It's ultra bright, it's great stuff. Now, let's get up in here. I wanna show you. Watch it, see it there? Right there, the line. See how it's bubbling like that? That's the refrigerant leaking out. With the oil there. Look at that. Woo! Nice and bright. We found the concern. I'm really surprised it's a compressor on here. Um, a lot of times if there's a leak, it's over here on the shaft seal. I really don't see the housing leak too often on the escapes, but you get the idea. They can leak anywhere. They rot. They lose tension in the bolts over time. Seals break. You know, they break down. It happens. And they're going to leak up here eventually. But this will help you identify the exact component that's leaking. Now, just because it is leaking, oh, man, that's got to be it. Now, go ahead and look around the rest of the AC system just to be sure there's not a small leak somewhere else in the system, too. Um, that's going to contribute to it. Uh, leaking out again here in the future but this one it's so freaking obvious otherwise you want to invest in a nice little uv light like this one right here this one from fluke is unbelievable small you can get in there in tight spots okay and you're checking stuff but it's led based so it's ultra bright and compact look at this thing look at that unreal from a handheld unit it's be unthinkable just a few years ago. You know, I'd say, you know, whatever, five, 10 years ago. So, you wanna go through, I know it's really hard to see on here, <laughs> but um, you get the point. You can see the dyes all over right here from injecting it. So you just wanna go through and see where it's leaking. And with the dye being so bright and this reacting with the dye, you're gonna be able to find the slightest leak. It's definitely the way to do it. And that right there is the basic procedure that many technicians use to diagnose and find leaks in the AC system. And the reason why they use dye is because it is so darn reliable. Now with sniffers, they give off false readings a lot of times. As they go through the engine compartment, they can actually pick up smells from you know, fuel system leaks, oils, and stuff like that. And the newer ultrasonic sensors are ultra sensitive, as you can imagine, to any kind of other ambient noise. So it's not ideal for many environments, especially not a noisy shop environment. Compressed air. Some people use compressed air. I don't like adding compressed air to the system because I know that air makeup, you know, nitrogen, oxygen, et cetera, et cetera. The molecules are definitely a different size, so they're not going to leak out the same as refrigerant 
And also, you're always gonna introduce some kind of moisture into the system. Moisture in AC system is like sudden death. It turns the oil, it mixes with the oil, and it turns the acid, okay? And it just eats itself up inside. Not good, not a good way to diagnose leaks in the AC system. Dye is the way to go. And the reason being is that you're taking the system, you're pulling into a vacuum, you're getting the moisture out, and then you're putting the dye in. And then you're recharging with the exact refrigerant that it uses so it can go through, you can make sure everything works from the condenser over to the evap. Your discharge temp is good, your pressures are good, you know everything is good to go except for your leak. So it's a really a thorough way to diagnose the AC system and in the end, find the exact leak. Now, these systems are so much smaller that it's gonna take a while for it to leak out of there. So when it does, it's gonna leave a tracer of dye and you're gonna be able to pinpoint the exact component that's leaking and replace it because AC system components, they're expensive, especially from Ford. Uh, so you wanna replace only what's needed. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I love relaying this kind of information to you that I've learned um, tips and tricks throughout the years in the field, and I'll see you next time.